not to be God is that we cannot time travel. Science fiction writers have thought about this for a long time, and scientists. But being able to go back in time or forward in time is still the stuff of fantasy. For now, at least, being human means being time bound. We cannot go back and revisit the past. And that is the one of the most difficult things about being human. All of us can think of something we wish we had a do-over for. Regrets. But that's another sermon. And we cannot visit the future or know it ahead of time and return to the present with that knowledge. We are captured in this present moment. This present moment is the only one in which we get to be and act and make choices. And that means as time-bound creatures, we are vulnerable to the fear of the unknown. In our gospel reading today, also known as the Angelus, the angel Gabriel tells Mary what is about to happen to her that will alter her future forever. Mary has so many questions, but she doesn't get to ask very many of them. And you know, whenever in the Bible an angel shows up and says, do not be afraid, you know something is really up. The angel is hoping she will not run away from her amazing destiny to be the God-bearer, the mother of Jesus. Later in the story, we hear her bold yielding to the unknown as she says, let it be, let it be to me according to your word. But how many questions did she still have unanswered? How much doubt must she have had? Fears about how she and the baby and Joseph would get through this. What would the future really bring? We live in the unknown every day, every minute. It's the nature of reality. We're in the dark about the future. We have our illusions about our daily and weekly routines to cover up how much is unknown. We make plans based on our hopes or beliefs about the future, but all of our plans, all of our plans are tentative, whether we think they are or not. We have a choice to be afraid or to face the unknown with faith and trust. With Mary, can we say today, let it be, God. I'll be your servant. I'll work with you. <coughs> Today, think about what are some of the unknowns in your own life right now that you may be anxious or excited or wondering about. Is there anything you'd like to run away from? In the darkness of this moment of unknowing, God is here. God is with us. The other thing is that many of us, well, we just always imagine the worst, you know? <coughs> As human beings, we have the gift of imagination, but some of us are really, really good at imagining the worst all the time. Do you know anyone like that in your life? Are you like that? In the absence of information about the future, we make things up, often not good, about what could happen. I, I resonated with Barbara Brown Taylor's story about being a child, going to bed at night, and someone comes and, you know, wants to put the light out. <coughs> and I remember my father coming in one night because um, I must have been about four or five. And I had my stuffed animals and I could see everything that was there in the light. And my father saying, everything that is here in the light is here in the dark. And everything that is not here in the light is not here in the dark as well. But somehow when he shut that light out, in my imagination, all kinds of things inhabited the room and the closet and the shelves in that bedroom. And a friend used to say, why, why pray when you can worry? What if, every, what if instead every worry became a prayer? <coughs> Some of you know that the, um, the beloved actor Jim Neighbors died this week. He was the famous Gomer Pyle from the Andy Griffin show of many of our childhood and uh, had his own TV show, was also a famous uh, baritone. But Jim Neighbors had a secret and an agonizing worry. He was gay. He grew up in a fundamentalist religious background where there was no room for the exception, for mercy, or for acceptance. 
Jim had retired to Hawaii with his partner and his fearful imagination. He struggled worrying that God could not love him. He imagined the worst about his spiritual future. But Jim had a friend who had a friend who was an MCC minister, Reverend Elder Ken Martin, who happened to be vacationing in Hawaii. And Jim neighbors invited Ken to his house. There they spent many hours looking through Jim's family Bible, King James Version, talking and crying from that dark place of the fear of the unknown. Ken talked and God moved and brought hope and peace to Jim for all the unknowns. When God is known, the unknowns become less important. They prayed and sang hymns. Ken recalled that story from 31 years ago this week as news of Jim Neighbor's death became public. And I took great joy and satisfaction. I remember when that happened all those years ago and thinking that Jim had a different kind of peace in his life because of that message and because of being able to know the God who makes the unknown bearable. So today, what might you be imagining in a fearful way? Can you put what you have imagined in God's hands? Can you give God at least one of your unknowns for safekeeping just today? <laughs> this Advent, we trust that even in our darkest moments, our darkest fears, God is with us. God is Emmanuel. I don't know how many of you have ever read Corrie Ten Boom's book, The Hiding Place. It was also made into a movie. Corrie Ten Boom and her families were Christians in Holland during World War II. And <coughs> out of their deep conviction, out of their love for Christ, they hid Jews in their attic during the Holocaust. Because they did this, they were sent to concentration camps. Corey and her sister Betsy were sent together. Corey was one of those whose imagination was often filled with worry, but not her sister Betsy. Betsy always had a positive attitude. She never seemed to give in to hopelessness, which encouraged Corey, but sometimes exasperated her. <coughs> Betsy insisted on giving thanks in all things. For in everything, she said, God works for good. But Corey really resisted this, especially in a place as dark, with as much suffering as a concentration camp. And one of the smallest, awfulest things in that place were the fleas, the terrible fleas. Fleas were like a plague. They were just evil. But Betsy insisted that they even give thanks for the fleas. This proved too much for Corey, who simply refused and resisted. Meantime, <coughs> the one solace they had every day was a time of prayer and Bible study. They were allowed to have this in their barracks. Corey wondered why the guards left them alone to do this. And finally, one day, she found out it was the fleas. They were so infested in those barracks that they would not come inside to interrupt them for their prayer and Bible study. Still struggling to give thanks for the fleas, Corey finally relented <coughs> and seemed like there was a purpose for them. When she survived that nightmare, and wrote her story, she included the story of the fleas. God moved in that darkness and created hope in spite of the hopelessness. We are here because people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. So what might be the fleas in your own life? Something that seems to have no purpose except to aggravate you. I struggle right now. It feels like a dark time in our country. It seems like we're infested by fleas of greed. 
<coughs> by fleas of corruption or disregard for the struggles of ordinary people. This week, the rights of LGBT people will once again be debated in the Supreme Court with people claiming they have a religious right to discriminate. Why, I keep thinking over and over again, must we deal with this? But I have to pray in my heart that there's a fruitful purpose and in this darkness. We learn about speaking up for our values for the most vulnerable. <coughs> we have to light a candle of hope even in a dark time, in facing the unknown, in coping with our imagining the worst, in facing our difficulties this Advent. Let us welcome the holy darkness as an opportunity to be embraced by garb, to hear God's voice of comfort and joy. So I ask you to think about doing some things this Advent. <coughs> if you can, once a day, Light a small candle. They say not a new one. Maybe an old candle you have rattling around in a drawer. Light that candle, that small candle every day. Allow there to be a little silence in your life. Allow yourself to be embraced by a God who can handle what sometimes it feels like we cannot. Take a walk at dusk or dawn. <coughs> or just sit outside one evening in the dark at home or at the beach. Allow the God who made darkness and light embrace you as your friend this season. Let's pray. God, we love you and bless you. We ask you to take hold of our imagination. We ask you to take hold of us in the midst of our fear of the unknown. Help us to trust you, even with the fleas in our lives. Help us to embrace your hope. Help us to trust you in these times. In Jesus' name. Amen.